Here's Smith, fires, touchdown! It's pretty exciting when your team's able to get that highly touted prospect out of the draft. But you know it's not exciting? When that high draft pick starts to look like a bit of a bust. While well, some 2023 NFL rookies like C.J. Stroud, Zay Flowers, Jalen Carter, and Devin Witherspoon have made excellent first impressions with their respective teams, a sample other big-name first-year players have looked like, well, rookies. For various reasons, some of the most highly touted first-year players have failed to put it together, and it's pretty clear that they have a long way to go in becoming the stars that so many people had envisioned. Now, before we start this list, we just want to clarify that this isn't to say that these players' careers are doomed or that they'll go down as big-time busts. We're strictly talking about what we've seen from these players thus far in 2023. So with all that said, let us dive into 10 NFL rookies who already look like busts. You know, recruiting, you know, big-time guys who love to play ball and love to compete to be the best. Bryce Young. The Carolina Panthers gave up a king's ransom to the Chicago Bears, so that way they could move up into the number one spot and take Alabama signal caller Bryce Young. Though his skill set was never in question, Young's smaller 5'10 frame left many scouts and analysts very concerned. And so far, well, those concerns look real valid. Young has taken a lot of hits, struggling to read defenses, and making way too many, uh, well, rookie mistakes with the football. He had just five touchdowns and four interceptions over his first four NFL starts, throwing for 204 yards or less in three of them. Yes, Young has very little help outside of Adam Thielen on offense, but CJ Stroud and Anthony Richardson have looked like seasoned veterans with limited support around them as well, so Young's lackluster set of weapons doesn't fully excuse him here. Now, not every NFL rookie QB can go off like Dak Prescott, Ben Roethlisberger, or Russell Wilson. All-time greats like Peyton Manning and John Elway even had horrific rookie years. And look at them, they turned out just fine. But you know, it's pretty clear that Young has a long way to go going becoming the franchise QB the Panthers had envisioned. He needs to put on more muscle, improve at reading defenses, and learn to take the easier completions instead of forcing low percentage throws. 2023 doesn't look like it'll be a year where Panthers fans can celebrate the arrival of their new franchise savior, because we have no idea yet if Young can actually become that guy. Jameer Gibbs. It never made sense to us when the Detroit Lions used the number 12 pick on Jameer Gibbs. Nobody expected him to go that high, and the Lions didn't need Gibbs after signing ex-Chicago Bears star David Montgomery in free agency. And sure enough, the Gibbs selection still doesn't make sense to a month into his career. Montgomery has been an absolute beast for the Lions' prolific offense, while Gibbs mostly just watches from the sidelines. Gibbs was supposed to be a bell cow back in Detroit's offense, but he's merely the number two RB on his own team. As long as Montgomery Montgomery continues to produce, the Lions have every reason to keep feeding him. That means few touches for Gibbs, who hasn't exactly ripped off explosive plays with a ball in his hands. It's not too late to grow into a star, but at least for right now, the Lions should be kicking themselves for taking Gibbs when they simply do not need him. But again, the coaching staff bears some responsibility for not giving Gibbs much usage either. Jackson Smith and Jigba The Ohio State product was widely viewed as the most complete all-around pass catcher in a deep wide receiver class. Fast forward a month month into his career, and we can only use one word to sum it up. Underwhelming. Smith and Jigba's yardage total over his first four games, 5, 10, 34, and 13. And no touchdowns. Yep, is it just us, or is that awfully disappointing? We get it. He's a rookie, and he has to share the ball with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, one of football's best receiving duos, and of course, star running back Kenneth Walker III. But Seattle is in win-now mode and hope to have three potential 1,000-yard wideouts this year. Smith and Jigba isn't drawing separation or getting open, which is kind of problematic when you consider that opposing defenses have to put more attention on Seattle's main weapons. As long as Metcalf and Lockett are producing, will Smith and Jigba ever find his game in the Pacific Northwest? I think it's a fair question to ask, considering how much of a non-factor he's been to open his career. Emmanuel Forbes Despite having several other pressing needs, the Washington Commanders curiously used the number 16 selection on Mississippi State corner Emmanuel Forbes. Now, cornerbacks almost always struggle as rookies, as they try to find their footing in the pros. But the early returns on Forbes are especially concerning on a Washington team that suddenly boasts one of the game's worst units. Forbes' struggles were especially evident in Week 5 against the Chicago Bears when he was lit up like a Christmas tree by DJ Moore. Per Pro Football Focus, Forbes had a defensive grade of 30 
33.6 for that game and was benched after allowing 76 yards on just three catches. Forbes has at least been a good playmaker on the ball, with five pass defenses through his first five games. But the commanders drafted him to be a pure shutdown corner. Instead, he's just been a major liability and a fun target for opposing QBs. Forbes isn't a bust just yet, but you know, that guy's gotta work on his film study and techniques if he's gonna be a star in this league. Motsy Smith The Dallas Cowboys are loaded with playmakers in the front seven, but Jerry Jones and company just couldn't help but reach for the Michigan defensive tackle at number 26 overall. Dallas, a team in win-now mode, probably should have selected a player that they expected to contribute right away. They've instead used Smith in a limited rotational role thus far, and yeah, we kinda see why, cause he sure hasn't made any positive impacts when on the field at all. Pro Football Focus graded him at a woeful 43.8 through the club's first five contests. Fortunate. His shortcomings are easy to overlook since Micah Parsons, Dorrance Armstrong Jr., Osa Udigizua, and Demarcus Lawrence are dominating in the trenches anyway. Michael Mayer Many viewed Mayer as the top tight end in the 2023 NFL Draft class. He was actually the third tight end selected behind Dalton Kincaid of the Buffalo Bills and the surprising Sam Laporta of the Lions. And finally, Mayer went 35th overall to the Las Vegas Raiders who needed a new starting tight end after trading pro bowler Darren Waller to the New York Giants. Entering 2023, the potential of this Vegas offense looked limitless. Mayer, Jimmy Garoppolo, Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, and Jacoby Myers. But the unit has not exactly lived up to expectations. And Mayer's ineffectiveness certainly stands out as one of the bigger disappointments in Sin City. Mayer didn't even have a single target in the Raiders' weeks one, three, or four games. You'd think an offense-first head coach like Josh McDaniels, who worked with Rob Gronkowski and Hunter Henry, would maybe find a way to get Mayer highly involved in his offense. So far, though, no cigar. Paris Johnson Jr. Arizona could have taken a plug-and-play guy like Will Anderson Jr., Jalen Carter, Devin Witherspoon, or hey, Christian Gonzalez with that number three pick. Instead, they played a game of musical chairs on draft night and traded that selection to the Houston Texans. Arizona then traded up via the Detroit Lions to select Ohio State offensive tackle Paris Johnson Jr. with the number six pick. The Cardinals wanted Johnson Jr. because he was supposed to excel as both a pass protector and run blocker in this Kyler Murray-led offense. But uh, Johnson Jr. has kind of just struggled across the board and committed a whopping five penalties in his first 315 offensive snaps per PFF. Yes, Johnson Jr. and that leaky Arizona O-line would look a lot better if they actually had Murray extending plays and dancing his way around would-be tacklers, but the Cardinals took Johnson Jr. 6 overall with the expectation that he could help right away. And, well, it simply hasn't come together thus far. Lucas Van Ness this wasn't a knock against Van Ness, but we were left scratching our heads on the Green Bay Packers' decision to use the number 13 pick on the Iowa edge rusher. The Packers had more than enough linebacker and pass rushing depth on their defense. They didn't, however, have enough receiving help nor depth on the offensive line to seriously compete in the NFC. Van Ness has only seen about a third of the Packers' defensive snaps, and he simply has not made an impact whatsoever. Pass rushing is supposed to be his best attribute, yet he's not even pressuring the quarterback. He had a tremendous week one debut against the Chicago Bears recording one sack and three QB pressures. Aside from a couple of tackles, however, his stat sheet has been mostly filled with zeros ever since. The Packers already have Devondre Campbell, Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith, and Quay Walker to front their pass rush. Van Ness wasn't needed at all, and yet they took him anyway and haven't been able to fully unlock his potential yet, let alone make him a semi-impactful player on D. With the Packers D in shambles thus far, the pressure has grown on Van Ness to start making an impact. Maybe he'll see more action in the second half if the Packers veterans continue to underperform. Tyree Wilson We had no problem with the Las Vegas Raiders using the number 7 pick on Tyree Wilson. They desperately needed another playmaker on defense to complement Max Crosby and Wilson was a consensus top 10 prospect. But I guess we shouldn't have gotten so excited with this pick. We should have remembered that aside from Crosby, the Raiders have continuously failed to draft plus develop quality young defensive players. Uh, that's just how it is with this organization though. Even after the Raiders' thrilling Week 5 home win against the Packers, PFF had Wilson graded as their worst rookie edge defender. Yeah, not ideal for someone who's supposed to be a game wrecker as both a pass rusher and run stopper. Wilson has seen his fair share of snaps on Vegas' defense, but the impact plays just haven't come. Having a player like Crosby should actually help open up opportunities for Wilson, but the former again is having to carry this unit all on his own. Of course, there's time for Wilson to figure this out and one day emerge as the star the Raiders and so many of us have envisioned. But considering the Raiders expected to be competitive this year, well, I think it's safe to wonder if they're already questioning the decision to take Wilson.
Quentin Johnston. The Los Angeles Chargers used the number 21 selection on TCU Horned Frogs wideout Quentin Johnston, and there was plenty of reason to be excited about this pick. Johnston was joining a high-powered Bolts offense led by superstar quarterback Justin Herbert, do it all running back Austin Eckler, and wideouts Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. With Allen nearing the end of his prime, however, it felt like Johnston was already in good position to succeed immediately. But it simply hasn't come together for Johnston. Like the aforementioned Jackson Smith and Jigba, Johnston just can't get open even when guys like Williams and Allens were drawing more attention from the opposing defenses. Williams sadly suffered a season-ending ACL tear in Week 3 against the Minnesota Vikings. Eckler missed Weeks 2, 3, and 4 with an ankle injury, and yet Johnston still couldn't get himself involved more in the offense. We know hindsight is 20-20 for a list like this, but seeing how well Allen has produced in his age 31 season, it just feels like the Bolts never really needed Johnston anyways. We still want to trust a guy like Herbert to figure it out with Johnston. This just might be one of football's premier QB receiving duos in the not-too-distant future. But for now, Johnston's complete ineffectiveness up to this point has been very disappointing in La La Land, especially with Eckler and Williams all missing ample time. Not ideal for a team that is trying to compete for a Super Bowl in a very loaded AFC. But what other NFL rookies already look like busts? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.